Hey everybody, what's going on? So today in this video, we're going to be talking about the three moving baits that I use that I put trailers on. So these are going to be the three uh, trailers that I like to use on these baits. Actually, there's four. Excuse me. Yeah, there's four. Uh, four trailers uh, for three different baits. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I pick them, uh, why I pick them, and all that. Uh, first off, or first off, uh, we're going to be talking about spinner baits. Now, something a little bit interesting about this video and my future videos going into this year is I will be uh, returning back to uh, some of my older in-depth episodes and kind of redoing them. Um, the reason why is I've learned a few things, a few new things about spinner baits. I've learned a few things new about swim jigs. Um, I've learned a couple of different ways that I like to fish them a little bit better than other other ways, uh, and just a few new tips that I like to uh, use with spinner baits. So I'll be talking about that um, in my next in-depth video. Probably don't know when that'll be, uh, but probably will be here uh, probably this month, I'd say. So the first thing we're going to talk about, like I said, is spinner baits. Now, as you guys can see here, this is a striking bleeding bait, chartreuse and white spinner bait. Got a big gold willow blade here and a small silver isn't it silver nope yes it is the light messed up my eyes it is silver small silver one and a big uh, willow uh, leaf gold uh, so how to how to say or how to uh, identify uh, willow blade versus Colorado blade uh, willow blade looks like a small willow leaf it's more of a minnow shape uh, now, when you get to a Colorado blade, Colorado blade is almost like a circle. It almost looks like it would be the head of a spoon. Um, and an Indiana blade is kind of a cross between the two. Um, it's a rounded, it's a more rounded, but it's also a little bit elongated. It's kind of an oval-shaped blade. Now, there is some specialty blades. I've seen them where uh, they're curved, like a, kind of like a banana shape. Um, I've seen some wild-looking, twisty-looking ones. Almost looks like that fancy pasta. Um, I've seen some crazy looking blades uh, on a spinnerbait. Um, I've also done videos on uh, doing spinnerbaits. I actually have an earring fishing video. I don't have the blade up here, do I? I don't see it. I have the blade around here somewhere. I actually caught two fish and hooked one in that video. If you guys not check that video out, definitely do. Um, and I also have a spinnerbait that I actually took some uh, fingernail clippers. I took the little handle and uh, put it on a spinnerbait, and it actually has some really good action. I'm probably going to do that video uh, this month, too, maybe. Don't really know. Hopefully the water will clear up before um, the end of the month. I want it to be a lot clearer so I can do that video. It's really muddy right now. But anyway, spinnerbaits. The way I choose a trailer. Now, if I can, if they have them to where you can... Uh, put a longer trailer on there if it's a longer hook um, if it's got a uh, a barb where you can keep it on there um, I will go with the Doc Sewer Company 4 inch swimmer now not obviously in this color because that'll be kind of a contrast in colors not really work together uh, but white is a great bait and if you're going with more of a natural color I would go with either the green pumpkin if you're going with like a green pumpkin or a black and blue spinner bait um, but if you're not going with something like that, if you're going more for a shad profile, I would definitely suggest the minnow gray colored 4-inch uh, four, four swimmer. But another great trailer, one of my favorite trailers for a spinnerbait, um, is the 3-inch Dock Sewer Company Grub. So a lot of people will probably be wondering, Michael, hey, why don't you throw the, uh, where's that here? A 3.5 gunner. This is the 3.5 gunner, uh, crystal shad, gold, and black flake. Um, a lot of people probably wondering why didn't you throw one of those. Key reason why don't throw a hard kicking swim bait on the back. If you ever, if you, any of you guys have bought or used the four inch swimmer, um, you'll know that the tail does not thump real crazy like the 3.5 gunner. Uh, this tail has a very very slow finesse uh, swimming action, and I like that in this swim bait for a spinner bait trailer. And the reason why is you got these two blades up here. You got this big monster blade here, plus you got this little one here that are spinning, causing a lot of rotation in the water. And when you go and you throw a very hard kicking, thumping tail, sometimes, especially if you're fishing clear water or pressured water, uh, the fish will think it's way too much commotion because you have three blades. Plus the, uh, the uh, swim bait, the skirt, the head, and everything is causing so much commotion in the water, they just won't even look at it. Now, if you're fishing muddy water, 
uh, warm, muddy water, you could probably get away with it. But if you're fishing clearer, um, colder water even, I would definitely suggest either going with the 3 inch grub or the 4 inch swimmer. Now the reason why I don't have a 4 inch swimmer on this one, because if you look at the hook, the hook is the hook is not uh, really shaped for a big trailer. It's more shaped for a small grub like trailer like this. So it actually it fits perfect on this grub. Now I've always heard stories about uh, the way you should rig a grub on the back of a hook. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't it doesn't matter uh, as long as it's moving. I think it I think that's the big thing is if it's moving, it's okay. That's what I think. Um, if you want to run a trailer hook, um, don't run a trailer bait um, because it'll interfere. Um, if you are running a trailer hook, more power to you. Um, I sometimes do. I have a spinner bait up there right now that has a trailer hook on it. Um, there for a while, that's pretty much the only thing I threw was a hook on the back of my spinner bait. But I've started using trailers, and I mean, most of the time I'll use a hook as my trailer. But you know, sometimes they want that trailer movement, and uh, I'll throw it on there for them. Next bait we're going to talk about is a chatterbait. So this is a Z-Man original chatterbait in white with silver flake. Now this is the OG chatterbait. This is the original one that I used. Uh, in my opinion, the chatterbait was and probably still is one of the best uh, pre-spawn and post-spawn baits out there. In my opinion, definitely one of the best in post-spawn. Um, I think that this, this thing excels when the fish are feeding up before the spawn. Um, Pre-spawn, in my opinion, perfect time for a chatterbait. I caught one of my biggest limits ever with the chatterbait during the pre-spawn. It was somewhere close to the range of 15 pounds. Um, and it was a great day of fishing. Uh, my traditional style of trailer, now even though I just said you don't really want a whole lot of kicking action on a spinnerbait... Spinnerbait is a lot different than a chatterbait. It's a smaller profile, doesn't have as much of a really hard thump with that big blade. It just has this little thing right here and whatever trailer you put on the back. So when I do go with a trailer with this, I'll go with the 3.5 gunner, but I'll still go with the 3 inch grub if I feel that it would be a little bit better of a trailer. But 3.5 gunner in white is what this one here is. Uh, that grub that I showed you is in white as well. So, when I go with a trailer on this, which I always do, I never go just plain Jane chatterbait. It doesn't seem to work. Um, when I do go with this type of a deal here, um, I like to target flats area, which I'll do an in-depth episode on these uh, here pretty soon because I love fishing chatterbaits, and I know a lot of people that do as well. Uh, so, look out for that video coming soon. But that's the reason why I throw a, a trailer like this is... Most of the time I'm fishing in the pre-spawn, and most of the time in the pre-spawn they love eating a moving bait. And uh, a lot of people like throwing square bills. I like throwing spinner baits, swim baits, and chatter baits, or swim jigs as well. Uh, just a little bit more finesse than a square bill, I think, with a chatter bait and a spinner bait sometimes even. So next we're going to be talking about the swim jig. So I have two swim jigs up here. I own three different company swim jigs. I own Six Cents. Strike King, and I own one California swim jig, which I'm about to show you right here. I've got this California swim jig in the crappie color, half ounce size, with a 3.5 gunner uh, in the gray minnow color. So I'll go over the reasoning for a 3.5 gunner as the trailer in one second. So I also have this six cent swim jig in, I think this is called Fire Gill or something like that. Um, I have it with a black blue, or it's actually a black magic, um, 3.5 gunner on the back of it. And I tell you what, that right there looks really good. Uh, so another great bait for a trailer is a kicking crawl style bait. This is the Doc Sewer Company Mud Crawler. Um, I, I like this thing on the back of a swim jig just as much as I like it. Texas rig flipping into a bush. Um, on a swim jig, I love it. Um, one of my favorite things to do is... When I'm using a crawl bait like this, is I'll take these little pincher things right here, and I'll pop them off there, and I'll rig it sideways. Now, the whole reason behind rigging it sideways is when it sits on that jig, it sits like that right there. So when it's coming through the water, all them fish are seeing 
It's this right here with these two little kickers back there just kicking around. And what them look like to them, what those fins look like to them, is the tail, the tips of the tail moving on a bluegill. Now I only, now this is just a preference thing, I've never done it with a white crawlbait just because I don't usually use white crawlbaits on a swim jig, um, mainly because I like the swim baits. Uh, but I almost exclusively use a green pumpkin with a bluegill colored swim jig. That's pretty much the only time I ever use a crawl style bait with a swim jig. This one here is a Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Swim Jig. One of my favorites. Uh, for the price, it's, it's probably my favorite. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the, the uh, California Swim Jig and it's a lot cheaper than the Six Cent Swim Jig. Uh, but if you want to get quality, I do suggest Six Cents or the Dirty Jigs uh, California Swim Jig. Um, that's just my opinion. I think that these here are decent quality for the price. Uh, but other than that, I would probably, if you want to spend a little bit more for better quality, uh, go with Six Cents or the California Swim Jig. That's just my opinion. So another trailer that I use for bluegill applications is the 4-inch swimmer. The 4-inch swimmer when I'm using a swim jig, I will go with the 4-inch swimmer if I'm imitating bluegill, um, unless I have a crawbait already on there. Uh, so those are the, pretty much the only two I do with a swim jig. Um, sometimes I'll go with a 3.5 gunner, uh, just if it's a little bit muddier water, or if I'm thinking that they're eating uh, a little bit uh, more erratic bait fish, uh, sometimes I'll go with 3.5 gunner. Uh, so if you want to purchase any of the baits shown in this video, let me know down in the comments below the three or the uh, three inch grub you get eight in a pack the 3.5 gunner you also get eight in a pack the four inch swimmer you get 10 baits in a pack right there and the dock Slayer company mud crawler you get eight in a pack as well so let me know down in the comments if you want to purchase any of the baits in this video uh, let me know the colors and all that stuff as well so thank you guys for watching once again bye